Enough of that. Transcendental Transformation, the place where spirituality and transformation unite. Host Miss Raina imparts truth so that you can break through your limiting beliefs and evolve into a deeper consciousness. As you go about your day, remember, before every breakthrough, there is a breakdown. And now, let's start the show. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Transcendental Transformation. I'm your host, Miss Reyna, and today is Tuesday, June 20th, 2017. As always, we are coming live from the W4CY studios here in West Palm Beach, Florida, and I hope all is doing well. Well, Sunday was Father's Day, and it was a day to honor all of our dads everywhere and uh, to just let them know how truly special they are. You know, I lost my father. Actually, I, didn't, I don't consider him lost, but, uh, but he passed away back in 2000. 2012 and uh, you know he was such an amazing guy and he still is an amazing guy I the, the relationship that I have with him still today is is amazing but the type of person that he that he was when he was here was a uh, very selfless he was caring he helped so many people all over the Chicagoland area and you know what the greatest trait that he did is he always put his family first even though I always tell you guys you know you got to put yourself first too and that uh, he sacrificed a lot to make sure his family always had food on the table, make sure we went to the best schools and had everything that we ever needed. Uh, you know, he taught me so much about business, so much about life, and you know, and, and I can't believe it's already been, what, five years since he's been gone, but, uh, but you know, I talk to him a lot. I still have the communication with him, and, uh, you know, and uh, you know, Dad, I, I still love you. I, I miss you still in the physical form, but, uh, but you know, thank you for everything you do, and if you have a father as great as mine, then, uh, then all you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. At the end of this show, I am going to, actually, I don't know, it's, it, might, it might either be at the break or at the end of the show, I'm going to auction off or have a little contest for, uh, I have a pair of tickets, actually two pairs of tickets for the Chicago Open Air con uh, Concert uh, in Chicago. It's, uh, I believe it's July 14th through the 16th is when it's taking place, but we will raffle off. I'm going to throw out a couple questions, and the first couple people that answer them are going to win the pair of tickets. So make sure you tune in for that. If you'd like to give us a call, the number is 561-623-9429. You can web chat us at the W4CY.com website and download the W4CY radio app. And our archive, our video archive, will be at YouTube.com forward slash Transcendental Transformation Radio Show. So, let's get into tonight's show. Tonight is the Masters and the Students. I love this topic because I love teaching. I don't know how many of you out there that teach. I don't know how many of you out there that want to teach. But uh, if you're new to spirituality, or maybe, you've, maybe you're new to a spiritual trade like yoga or energy work, or maybe you've been in it for a long time, and you've always been the student, but you're thinking about pushing past a little bit and maybe taking on new clients, maybe taking on students. I, I don't look at people that I take on, even in business as clients. They are all my students. Uh, I have different categories of students. Students. But uh, but to me they're all I, I think the word student and client are, are are the word student is a little bit more intimate than than calling my my students clients uh, at least for business. But how many of you want to take on new students or clients? How many of you want to, to build a business or start you know get past that that uncomfortable zone or being a student and 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 willing to teach people? What is it about teaching that's so alluring? I, I know from from you know from 
birth, I was just, I, you know, as, as first as I can remember, I just, you know, I, I always w wanted to teach. I, I love to teach. There was this passion about teaching and, uh, you know, and it was just something that I, I was natural at. Uh, I would have conversations with people. And even when I was really young, I would have conversations with adults and they would look at me and be, <laughs> and be like, how do you know that? And, uh, and I just, you know, and teaching has, you know, teaching is, is very, is very rewarding. And anybody who teaches, whether it's an actual school teacher or if you're in the spiritual arts of some sort or any form of teacher, uh, if you enjoy what you do, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But tonight we're going to talk all about the student-teacher bond because the student-teacher bond is very unique. It's a very special bond between two people or maybe several people uh, that builds beyond the friendship. I look at all my students, especially my protege, as, um, as family-like. They, they, you know, they transcend beyond friendships. And when I'm working with somebody, we have to have that special, unique bond because in order for us to be able to teach someone, we have to be able to connect to them. And I think that's where sometimes business aspects of, uh, you know, get gets kind of mumbled jumbled in the mix. But uh, but when we look at it and we have, you know, we, we say, well, I want to be a teacher. I, you know, I want to be able to get out there. I want to be able to do what I, I, you know, and teach my knowledge and pass down everything. And, uh, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to begin. Well, you know, tonight's show is going to kind of give you an overview of kind of like the things that you're going to experience while teaching and while being students. So if you're a student, if you're new to it and you, you know, you don't really want to be a teacher yet, but there's some things that I'm going to talk about tonight that I want to make sure that you guys understand because building the bond with a student, like I said, is so very important because you need to develop a deep connection. It has to have an energetic connection on some level in order for you to work with the student. Trust, Honesty, loyalty have to be a, a, are, are, are must. You, you have to learn to develop these between the two. Trust is probably the biggest part in, in teaching. More than the knowledge, more than anything you're ever going to do, trust is everything. Why would trust, if I'm going to sit there and say trust is everything, why would you think that trust is, is, is so important? Well, because, you know, if we take a look at the student relationship, the student teacher relationship, especially when you're taking on someone so intimately, you're going to look at things and say, realize that you have somebody's life in your hand. You have somebody's life in your hands. Somebody is coming to you and saying, hey, mold me, shape me, teach me what you know so that I can have a life full of full of blessings or, or, or greatness or whatever it is they're looking for, you know, full of balance. And, and uh, you know, and, and, and that's why it's so important because when you, when you take a step back, and I know a lot of people, even my protege out there, is such in a rush to start teaching. And a lot of times when, you know, people join my program and do different things, the first thing I tell them is, uh, you know, while you're working with me, at least for the first year, uh, you're not allowed to see any other teachers. You're not allowed to go to any other classes and you're not allowed to read any other books and stuff. And that's because there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is because over the first part of the year is I have to learn to develop or we have to learn to develop trust with each other. We have to build the bonds, the energetic connection. We have to learn to trust each other. We have to learn that one another is honest with each other because, you know, as much as I'm honest with people, people, it's hard to be honest with somebody, especially if you don't know them. I mean, you may look at somebody and say, oh, well, they're spiritual. And if they ask you something or, oh, this is somebody I want to teach me, but they ask you something intimately. Isn't it a little hard sometimes? Don't you kind of catch yourself and you're just like, ooh, uh, do I really want to say this? Or maybe you say it in a roundabout way, but you really don't really fully open up. And why is that? Because that hasn't developed yet. It takes time. And so when I ask people not to do this, it's not because, you know, one of the other reasons is because I don't want to be battling all the time. Well, this teacher said this, and this book said this and this, and it wastes a lot of time. But that's one of the main reasons why. And so if you're thinking about getting into teaching and you're going to take on some sort of proteges, you're going to take on, or even as a student, look for this, look for, take your, take a step back. And when you walk into something like this, you got to realize that, you know, these lives are in your hands and you're going to have a major influence on this person. You are going to have such a major influence on this person that, you know, if, if whatever way you tell them to go, you know, because they're, they're, they're open and they're looking for that guidance and they're, and they're trusting you is they're going to go that way. And that can be scary and it can, it, 
It can be full of full of joy too. It could be all these different things. But you have to be aware of what you're doing first. The student is coming to you because they expect you to know. They expect you to have the knowledge of of everything. And you know, and that's one of the biggest that's one of the biggest hardships of being a teacher, isn't it? Is if you if you're a teacher out there that you know that students expect you to know everything. And I don't know anyone <laughs> any one of us who who actually you know who actually believes that they uh, that they that they know everything definitely not me uh, but uh, but you know but these are the type of ideas that we're doing your job is to teach them to understand the arts and whatever they're coming to so if you're if you're if you're going to be a yoga instructor if you're going to be a energy healer or a Reiki master or teach any of these forms or even maybe spiritual teachings maybe life coaching or any sort of form of it you know the teacher's role is to teach them the understanding of that art. And this has to be taken seriously. I have always taken my job very seriously. And a lot of times people say, oh, Miss Raina, you're too serious when it comes to that stuff. But you know, I understand the value of the importance of this relationship. If someone is going to come to me, I'm going to give them my, my all. I'm going to give them the 100%. I'm going to be honest with them. I'm going to be loyal to them. I'm going to, I'm going to show them that they can trust me. Why? Is because I know what the other side of that is like because you're trying to find yourself you're trying to find an idea you're trying to find something in life a path to go down so that your life can become a little bit more happier it can be a little bit more smoother we can reach whatever goals that we want to reach and and I understand that and so if someone's coming to me whether they're paying me or they're actually coming to be as one of my other private students you know I am absolutely going to take that seriously and why shouldn't you you need to understand that that whenever you take on any Body, that you should treat them just as well as you would want to be treated. So if, if you're if you're taking them and just passing down whatever information just for you know S and Gs, well then you know the, then that's not really doing much for them. And this is one of the things that I see is too many teachers. When I go out there and I've done a lot of networking, I've traveled all over this country and and been to a lot of different places, and I've been to so many places that that have instructors and teachers and everything, and and you know and. and people become too passive when it comes to this type of stuff and 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 what I end up seeing is, is to a fault and sometimes this gets tricky is we become about their ego we become about them it becomes about filling a personal need and and I'm going to tell you right away teachers it should never ever ever be about you it, it, the only thing that is about you is is the knowledge that you're gonna pass down in truth honesty and loyalty and respect and that's about it but other than that you know it, it if if you're if you're going up there and you're teaching people and you're and you know we're gonna get into the look at me syndrome in a second but if you're going up there and you're and you know it's about you and fulfilling that personal need I know many teachers that go up there and man when they hit that stage it is all about you know hey look at me look at look at how great I am look at the knowledge I have I am the person to go to nobody else is there to go to and it's fulfilling that ego and, and when you talk to them and privately and I've talked to many of these people man they're rocking and rolling on stage and then all of a sudden they can't get their life together. Their relationships are a mess, their personal life's a mess, they're lonely, they're sad, they're all these things. But they go up on that stage and they present themselves as, as the person to go to. And one of the biggest things that I'm always going to say to you is, is if there's something that's going on in your life as a teacher, if there's something that's going on in your life and it becomes so chaotic or so out of balance that you, you know, that your life starts, you know, flailing out, then take Take a step back and and you know tell your students tell your tell your uh, clients tell whoever you know that hey right now I need to take a step back I have some things to work on and I can't be a teacher right now because you know because that is surrendering the ego as I said that a teacher should never say it, it should never be about you if you can't learn to recognize when it's about you if you can't learn to recognize when that's switching because it's very easy to get caught up and people start praising you you know you you go out to set out to this idea of having you 
you know, I'm going to teach the world, I'm going to change the world, I'm going to do all these things. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have unresolved issues that you haven't worked on. And what ends up happening is people pat you on the back, people tell you how good you are, people smile at you, people come up to you, and it makes you feel so good, feel so loved. And boy, is it filling that, is it's filling that ego side, that, that side that we didn't realize that has presented itself. And it's so easy to get caught up in. So it's, so remember that it's always about them. Ask yourself every single day, and what am I doing? Am I, am I doing this for myself? Am I doing this to fill a, a, a side? Is there something that I'm not seeing inside of me? You know, or am I doing this for the student? Because every single student that sits across from my table or, or that comes into my life, I make sure that I am responsible for all that. I take full responsibility and I say, okay, well, this person is coming to me and I got to make sure that my personal differences, whether I agree with them or not, because let me tell you something, that when you take on different people, you're going to have all, all different belief systems, whether they're religious, political, you know, personal, how to raise children, how to do all these things. And you must learn to separate from that. If you cannot learn to separate that without getting upset or without trying to push your way on somebody, then then that is coming from the ego. And this is where we have to be able to distinguish who, how we're teaching. So if I ask myself, okay, if I feel like if I'm a, talking across the across away from somebody and someone has and they're throwing out an idea at me or they're throwing out a thing and they're and all of a sudden I'm having an emotional reaction to it. What have I always said about emotional reactions? Is it always comes from some sort of the ego? The ego is getting if uh, the ego is getting defensive because there's something, there's a limitation, there's a roadblock in your mind that's saying, nope, that's not the way I was taught, that's not the way I am, and we become defensive. And what does defensiveness trigger? It triggers the emotion. The brain says, hey, this is not right, this is wrong, I don't believe in this, this is how dare they, this isn't part of my morals, and that's when you start to change. And so if if you're open, if you if you're open and you're subjective and you're just listening and you're allowing yourself to be that person, allowing yourself to be that teacher, then you're going to make sure that it's about them. You're going to make sure that you pass on the knowledge and the wisdom for them so that they can find their way and have an easier life. I mean, I mean the job of a teacher is to help others, right? The job of a teacher is to pass down the knowledge of whatever we learned or whatever, uh, you know, whatever ideas, the concepts that have come into our life to be able to you know make our lives easier and it may not it may work for them it may not work for them depending on their own actions and form of responsibility but you know if, if we if we if we pass down that knowledge and we make life easier then what do we do we heal the pain we heal we overcome our challenges and that's what teaching is really about teaching isn't uh, about making everybody feel good it, it's it's about it's about helping people heal from their pain it's about helping people overcome their challenges and sometimes and we're going to get into this a little bit later but sometimes that's very uncomfortable sometimes the best teacher in the world is going to you know almost like metaphorically slap you in the face and 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 you know present something to you so earth shaking that yeah it rocks you to your core but it allows that breakage to be able to to be able to happen so the look at me syndrome is something that I see every single uh, a lot actually I shouldn't say every single time but I, I see it a lot and I know quite a few people that have it and too many teachers have this everything that they're doing is about their self image and this is the number one mistake we fall into. If you if you do not, and I'm going to say this about five million times throughout the rest of the show, if you have something that's unresolved and it's a major life challenge and it, it seems to present a roadblock, do not teach. If you cannot handle your own daily life, if you cannot handle the challenges that come up, you know, on, on a regular basis, a daily basis, whatever it is, if you cannot handle these things, then you are not ready to be a teacher because it's not fair to you, it's not fair to the students, it's not fair to whoever they're going to teach that you pass down the same fears, the same this, the same limitations, and everything because you don't know how to figure something out. I, you know, you go to school. Why? Why do we go to school? 
We go to school to learn. So if I'm taking, let's say I went to school for three years for oriental medicine school and acupuncture, and let's say like those doctors and those teachers didn't study really much and they didn't really know what they were talking about. And they were kind of guessing. They were just kind of putting their own input. They weren't putting facts. They weren't putting logic behind it. And they were just saying, well, yeah, it's kind of over here, this point, and this point kind of does these things and some other stuff. What would I learn? If have you ever had a teacher that was that had so many problems in their life and they came to school and tried to teach you something and and you could just see it that they were just going through the motions there's no passion there's no there's no energy there's no nothing and it just seems to it just doesn't seem to go anywhere well these are the type of things that I'm saying so so take a step back and, and do it but if 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 your self image is is one of the biggest things that you need help with then you know it's it's going to be it's going to feel great it's going to look great when you're teaching it's going to it's going to make you if if the only time in your life that you really feel alive is when you're up on that stage or when you have clients and people are coming to you and telling you how great you are and and, and you feel so good in helping people that it becomes that's what it's really about when you become great in everyone's eyes or the person to be to well then this is what we need to do and take a self back or take a step back these these teachers as as and I'm talking to you students right now, if you if you talk to these teachers, these teachers are dangerous. You need to learn to take, take a step back. You know, when one of the first things that I said was that we don't, you know, nobody knows everything, not even me. I, you know, I don't care how old I am. I don't care how old these people are. And I don't mean uh, human age. I mean, uh, spiritual age and that nobody comes here to know everybody or know everything. And why would we, why would we want to know everything? It would drive me absolutely nuts. So any teacher, students, any teacher that acts like they, or believes that they know everything, that they can help anybody and everything, no matter what, what the cause is and that 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 there's no other teacher but them these are the warning signs that you need to look out for and uh, and we'll be right back after these messages from the life of Raina a message from the life of Raina we live in a world faced with many tough challenges our lives become chaotic and fill with disaster ever so quickly, most of the time before we even realize. Our issues beat down our mental mindset and an imbalance of emotions become prevalent. The Life of Reina is dedicated to helping people on the deepest spiritual level. Miss Reina, the creator of Transcendental Development and Growth, works on your core issues and finds the solutions which allow you to break free from the emotional bondages of life helping you achieve the life you've always wanted to live. Isn't it time that you lived life for you? Call the Life of Reina, 561-846-2190, and schedule your appointment today. That's 561-846-2190, or email thelifeofreina at icloud.com. Okay, we are back. You can uh, give us a call, 561-623-9429, or you can web chat us on the w4cy.com website. So we are talking about students and, and masters, or ma students and teachers. And one of the things that we were just talking about before the break is, you know, is teachers that uh, that are that are resolved in e or that are into their egos and that aren't really passing down knowledge. And I was giving you a little bit of warning signs beforehand, and I was telling you about, you know, that the, some of the red flags to look at is if a teacher believes that they know everything, the teacher tries to convince you that they know everything and or that they can help everyone because uh, because these are the type of things that we have to look out for. So if, if there's a if there's an idea that kind of like the one you know the one size fits all theory uh, and, and it, it just it, you know those type of things are, are red flags because not everything you have to learn to individualize things. You have to look out for other teachers. And when we do, when we look for other teachers, the first thing that we're going to, a teacher should be able to know is their limitations. Everybody should know their form of limitations. Everybody has to know their, their, you know, what their capabilities are, both you and the students. When people come to me, no matter what it is, uh, 
the first thing I do is I sit down with them. I sit down with them and I sit there and I, you know, and I talk to them and I always have a consultation with them or sometimes, you know, if they're coming to me as a private student or whatever, I, I, I'll sit down and talk and see what there is. And a lot of times, you know, there are people that, that I don't take on. There are people that I do take on. And uh, cause I know my program, I know like with the type of work that I do, even in business and everything that I'm, I, I, my, it's, it's very hard. It's a very, I, I don't want to say aggressive, but uh, it's it's very challenging, and uh, you know, and 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 I push people. I push people hard. My my program and the things, the type of work that I do is not for is is not for people that are new. Are not for people that are that are easily rattled. Are not for people that you know that are sensitive to tones and words and everything. If you're one of those that you know gets upset because somebody doesn't talk to you, you know, in in your idea the the right way that you want to be talked to where they change their tone a little bit or you don't like to be challenged past your comfortability, then I already know that I am not the person for you because the type of people that I find are people that have been through it before, that have, you know, have gone to all these different teachers, have gone to all these different things and run out of ideas and just don't seem to, they only seem to be able to get so far. And, and when they're really, when they're, when they're at their wits end and they're like, okay, you know, I really need someone to kick me in the butt and push me past my uncomfortabilities and really kick it into gear. That's why I always say I'm like spiritual boot camp. But I know my capabilities. And I've I've tried this. Even when I was younger, you know, I've tried to take on people because, you know, I, I thought, well, you know, okay, well I shouldn't turn down people. You know, but uh, but I took people on that uh, that that were too sensitive. And my personality and, and their sensitivity, it, it it didn't pan out right. And and that taught me some of the limitations. That taught me some of the capabilities. Because my job again, is to teach people and to help people find their way or, or, or help them find their way. And, um, and and you have to know who you can help and who you can't. That's so very important for any teacher out there and, and who fits them. The, the the fit has to be like together like a lock and a key. You have to be able to, you know, go together like hand and glove. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, that's what seems to gel because those people are on your wavelength. Like I said, if, if I have somebody that just really doesn't want to be helped, you know. Obviously, no, me or anybody is not going to be able to help them. And if if I want somebody that kind of wants help, and we get those people too, teachers, you have to learn to recognize that too. When you get people that kind of want help, and they show up, and they're you know they show up weekly, and they do their things, they do their homework, but they're just putting in just enough effort to say, hey, you know, I'm I'm doing it. Uh, you know, and if you're a gym person like me, especially when I worked out six seven days a week, you'd get those people and personal trainers, I know you know that, where people will say, they, sh you know, oh, yeah, I'm showing up, I'm doing this, but you're not seeing any changes in them because they're not doing their homework behind them. So I, uh, the, you know, I know that I have to find people that are willing to do, you know, to do the homework that I give them, that are willing to push themselves, the, that believe in themselves, or even if they don't believe in themselves, they, they have faith in themselves enough to push themselves past the hardships and understand that as a teacher, as a guide, that I'm I'm going to be there with them because I, if, if I understand what my students are looking for, because I, that's one of the things we have to look for too. Well, what are your students looking for? What do they want from you? What is it that they need in life? What are all these ideas coming to you? Because that's great if we put our hands over, you know, somebody and just, you know, and say, oh, this is so great. This is so wonderful and all that stuff. But if, if we're, if, if we're not doing that, if we're just putting our hands over somebody and, and that only does so much. And so healing and teaching have to go beyond that. We have to know what they're looking for. We have to know their needs and, and their needs may change throughout the course. I know I, I have people tell me, oh, well, I want to be happy. I want this. I want all these different things. And then all of a sudden throughout the time, throughout the, you know, the year I'm working with them, the two years I'm working for them, all of a sudden their needs and, and wants and beliefs, everything changes. And, and they do this on their own. Why? Because most of the time when people are coming to you for first, 
it's out of the fear it's out of the ego it's out of all these things that you know that that keep them in their limitation and as they realize that the things that they try to hold on to aren't necessary anymore and all these fears and all this confusion that they have they realize hey the only thing that they're looking for is themselves and to have harmony with themselves and all the rest so change away but if you're not able to identify that or or and and move with that how about spiritual evolution are you teachers out there can you you identify spiritual evolution can you tell when somebody is at a certain point in their life and what they're capable of understanding I mean obviously if someone had doesn't have a spiritual evolution they may not like this show or another show or whatever they may not get the concepts that I'm talking about but to older souls or ancient souls they may understand it right away and so different people have different ideas and this is why it's so important to know your capabilities you have to make sure that you're and that, that you understand understand the evolution of the spirit at that time and have a plan have a plan I always tell people have a plan and I don't mean you know when I say tailor fit I don't mean I, I, I don't mean having a plan that's like okay this is the I'm writing out a blueprint and this is exactly what I'm gonna that I'm going to you know stick to because again the one size fits all doesn't fit but I do have certain things that I teach everybody there's certain foundational things that I know that's important to the life that they want to achieve that I know that no matter who it is, no matter what they believe, these foundational things do get there. But I do, I do, you know, transfer things and I do move things around depending on how, what their needs are, what their capabilities are, how sensitive they are and what they're learning. Where are their strengths? Where are they learning in that side? Because everyone learns differently. So you have to learn to be flexible, especially with certain ideas. Yes, you can develop that plan. You can develop that core. You can develop whatever it is. But if you're trying to sh shove the same type of ideas down everyone's throat in that, in that sense, then you're going to find some people are going to get it and some people aren't you have to learn to be adjustable and try different approaches it, it, it you, you cannot learn and I'm gonna say this this is so important you cannot teach past your means do not teach past your means a lot of teachers do this and a lot of teachers because we I, I had a student one time very short time that came to me this person wanted to this person was lost they didn't know what they wanted to do they haven't really taken any spiritual stuff and but they wanted to be a teacher they wanted to help somebody and they and I said okay well you could work with me blah blah and I know you're doing these other things so I'll let it slide for right now but you know as, as soon as those things are done well as soon as they got their certificates for being Reiki and you can be a Reiki master within three months and um, as soon as they got their title of master man they took off and three months later I saw all this stuff on the web and all, all these things hey you know you can come to me I'm your spiritual advisor I'm doing all this stuff and you know and 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 within three months I mean this person came to me and said that they had you know that they've never really took in a spiritual class they've never done anything they're they don't know what they want to do all they know want and came with so much confusion you're telling me and three months later all of a sudden you're out there posting and doing all this stuff and acting as because you have a title of master don't teach past your means because if you do what's going to end up happening is you're going to be able to you're going to create a situation and, and it's going to cause chaos and no matter what if someone comes to you because there's going to be people coming to you that that really believe that you could if you tell them hey you could fix this and you can do this and you can do all these things people are going to believe that that's why I say it's so serious you can open up Pandora's box and have a whirlwind and mess somebody's life up you don't know what the capability is and you know what I'm guilty of it when I was younger I've had a situation that happened pretty similar to me and this taught me and I said whoa I was like you know what, Lori you're right you were right. I, I I shouldn't have I shouldn't have taught this at this time because I didn't have an understanding of it. You know, how many times do good intentions lead to chaos? How many times do people say, "Well, I had good intentions. I had the best. I, you know, I was I was just trying to help them. I was just trying to do what I thought was best for them." But the fact is, is if you don't know them, if you don't know what they're capable of, you don't know their limitations. If you don't know their spiritual evolution, you don't know what's going to cause them the chaos. You don't know what's best for them until you build that relationship. Until you build that trust, that's the true mark of a teacher. That that will always make sure that you're able to. To teach people fully the way you need to because our goal is to maximize everything right we want to make sure that we maximize our influence 
if I sit there and I, you know, and I, I look at my clients, even my, even my protege, we were together last week and we were talking and, uh, you know, and I, we were talking through text and I forgot the conversation right now, but, uh, but I said, well, you know, one of these lifetimes, you're going to have to do this. <laughs> and, and the comment I get back, oh, well, what about this lifetime? Because, you know, my protege is very over eager. He's very eager to, you know, he wants to be the teacher right away. And I even had to, to cut him down in that sense, not like verbal. But I had actually, you know, teach him. Hey, slow down! Right now, you're a student. You got to do these things. You got to learn. You got to do all these things because you know. I know you're eager. I know you want to go out and change the world and help people and do all the things. And great, that's noble. But you have to learn these things first. And and if you're allowing people, if as a teacher, if you're allowing people after they've slowly learned things to go out in the world and change all this stuff and do all these different things, then you're going to open up a box of worms that you can't handle. And I'm sorry, but this is my life. This is my name. My word and my name and my reputation mean everything to me. I don't, you know, I don't care what you do. Just if, if I've taught you, I expect you not to act this way. I expect you to work in honesty, loyalty, respect, and truth at all times. I, if you start, if you start saying, you know, if you start taking my teachings and the things that I do, and you start transforming them into something else, well, then guess what? I, I'm not going to say, hey, that's that's my student anymore. And why? And because that's not what I teach. So, so you know, you have to take these titles, and that's why, you know, how many times for you people that have listened to the show many times in the past. How many of you know I hated the title Spirit Guide? How many of you know I hate the titles of Masters and all these different things? Even even when my protege says, hey, well, you know, well, what are you like, an avatar? What, what should I call you? And I was like, don't call it. Call me Miss Reyna because I, you know, because that's all I want to be called because a title doesn't mean anything. A, a title is just, a, a title really, to be honest with you, to, in my view, is just, to, is just to fill the ego. Well, I can call myself a master, but do you really, can you really master energy within three months if, if you really think that you took a weekend class and got trained in let's say reiki for in three months and you really think you are a master of energy do you really think you know everything there is to be out there? Even you yoga people or whatever, you, you know, yoga is such a, is such a wondrous form of, of, form of an art, a spiritual art. And there's so much to learn. I had a student uh, that just recently left the program and, and she was, and she took all these classes and she was traveling around the world and she was doing this for years. And she's like, you know what? I never really, and she was studying up late. Like, like it was a, like she was at a university and it was like, I never realized how much there was to this and I said and, and I said yes I was like how you have to realize that just because someone hands you a 35 page pamphlet and, and gives you a certificate doesn't mean you know the material and you have to emphasize this to your students. If you want to, if you teachers want to maximize this, then you have to get this, you have to make sure that your students understand. You have to make sure that your students are in control of themselves, that they're not trying to get ahead of themselves, that they work with integrity and that you work with integrity. You have to work with integrity and not belief system. If it's something that you believe, then don't teach it because that is where we go down the line of, of, of tricking people into, you know, into believing something that they make or pushing our way onto them. In, in teaching people, you must teach people truth. Belief will always create chaos and limitation. I've said that a million times and I'll say it a million more, but belief will always create chaos and limitation. Anytime and there is chaos. Anytime there is an emotional upset, there is a limitation in your mind due to a belief system that has created that. An open mind is willing to learn. An open mind is willing to teach. An open mind can see past the limitations, can say, well, yes, this is what I was taught. And yet this is what I learned from my message. Well, people do not believe when I say I've never taken a spiritual class. I've never read a spiritual book. I've never done any of this stuff. Why? Because everything that I have ever learned was from inside.
It was just through meditation. It was just through knowing. It just things come to me like that, and that's one of my gifts is is just being able to understand that. But if I had a closed mind, and even when things come, I I understand something, and I say, okay, well, this is what I understand now. Let's see if it evolves. Let's see. Let's let's not say, well, this is the only way, because again, there's many paths to running the race, right? But let's see what happens. Let's see right now. This is what seems to be true, and this is what works. So if this is there. Then let's keep an open mind and let's see how you know this may work in this sense towards me. And it may be true for everybody else, but maybe there's different roads. Maybe there's different ways to drive that car. And so we surrender the ego. We surrender it to to you know to who to our to our idea of what we want to teach. So the last like ten minutes because we're gonna I'm gonna, I want to do that contest in uh, in a little bit. But uh, uh, students, this is this is to you. <laughs> Students, I want to because you know I understand when you're going out there, it's tough. It, you know, you don't. There's so many teachers. There's so many places to go. There's you know there's there's so many businesses out there. Everybody's into the spiritual arts. Everybody's into like even down here. There's there's you know a dime a dozen acupuncturists. Who do we go to? What do we do? But the first thing I want to tell you is, what's your job to do, students? What is the first thing, and and what's your main job? Is to be a student. Is to just be a student. Is 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 just. There's nothing worse than when a student tries to overstep. When a student tries to teach as they learn. When a student tries to do too much. Right now is a wonderful time in your life. I know some of you usually are young, and maybe you're a little bit older of a student, and that's okay. But slow down and be a student. Enjoy learning. Enjoy, enjoy having someone teach you. Enjoy the experience of growth, because you're so busy trying to gain all this knowledge and do all this stuff that you're not enjoying the moment. And you know, honestly, when I go to school, as much as sometimes I hate doing the homework and hate all the tests and stuff, I enjoy being a student. Why? Because I get to sit there in the classroom and learn something new. And how wonderful is that? You know, any student that tries to start going past it, and I restrict all my students. I don't care if you're if you're one of my client students, or if you're one of my personal students, or even if if you're my protege. I make sure that you do not teach anybody because you are not in the position to teach. That like I used the acupuncture uh, uh, idea earlier, and I said, well, you know, well, if I'm, if, how can I teach people if I was going to acupuncture school and Oriental medicine, and I didn't know half the herbs, and I didn't know half the thing, and I'm going around teaching people oh yeah well this is how you do this point and this is what this is for <laughs> I mean do you get the concepts so enjoy being a student there's no, you know when you try to teach past your means again and this goes for you too it's very irresponsible it's very egotistical and it's very selfish of you it's very selfish of you to try to put a limited amount of knowledge on somebody else because you want to go out and help the world you want to try to to teach people that's great work where you again, you know, good things, you know, from good intentions comes chaos. It's great that you want to do this, but check yourself. Realize your role. Focus on the learning. Focus on the growing. Focus on understanding the material and, and to and enjoy it. There's, you know, there's a lot less responsibility once you make that switch, students. Once you make that switch from student to teacher, there is a lot more responsibility. And I'm telling you, once you make that, once you make that spiritual switch, and you say. Well, I want to be a teacher, and I'm going to be a teacher. It doesn't shut off. I I don't know how many friends tell me. No matter where I go, even if I try to disguise myself, people will come up to me and just be like, oh, "I don't know why I'm talking to you." And then it turns into okay, and and then a lot of times I have to cut it off. But because that type of mode is always out there. Work on resolving the ego. Work on resolving the past pains, the judgment, the rec uh, you know recognizing the naivety, uh, the limitations within yourself, and and understand that stuff. Do not do not blindly trust anybody, any teacher, and blindly accept anybody just because someone says it. Just because I say it, I want you to question everything I say. Just because Miss Raina says it, just because that person says it, doesn't mean that it's. 
always true. And you know what? Sometimes I trip up my, my students like that. Sometimes I purposely say something false just to see if they're going to, they're stuck in that idea of just, oh, here, Miss Raina's saying it, so it must be true because I know she tells the truth. Sometimes I try to keep them on their toes and then they come back to me and then they say, well, I, I just trusted you. I said, well, again, I tell you these things so you go out in the world and work on this. And so you go out in the world. I don't want you just listening and taking everything I say and just blindly trusting me. Yes, I'm going to tell you the truth, but I want you to make sure that you question everything, that you understand the importance of going out doing your research, that you question everything, that you do these things so that you become open-minded because people who are closed-minded blindly follow something. People who are closed-minded accept what somebody else says just because they say it. And this is the problem in religion and politics and all sorts of different things. Don't jump into a relationship just or any relationship with any teachers. Watch for those fake teachers. Remember how I was talking in the beginning of the show about the ego and the life? You know, somebody that's money hungry. Yes, everybody, if, if it's their business, yes, they deserve money. You, they deserve to be paid well. There's, I have no issue with anybody trying to get money, you know, or, or trying to make money and uh, for the what they do and everything. But when it becomes, you know, for every little thing and then you got to donate to this and donate for this and da, da 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 well then it's something that you have to think about if a teacher can't pa think past their needs or past what they're told then it's not a good teacher and you need to back away students a teacher should be able to always adjust always think about concepts and and not just repeat what they've read in a book not just repeat what the world says because just because the world says it 10 million times doesn't make it right doesn't make it true and so you have to be open to these ideas students you have to find a good teacher as i said challenges you they they sometimes will upset you so i, I I aggravate my clients, even my protege, I aggravate them, you know, a good number of times. When I see a limitation, when I see something that they refuse to go past, I purposely and become the antagonist. And why? And I do it in a specific way. I'm just not mean and nasty about it, but I do it in a specifically spiritual way that triggers that, that, that limitation to break. And when that limitation breaks, hey, I don't mind being the bad guy if it's going to allow you to heal. I've had students, like I said, I've had students that have have walked away from the program because they were unwilling to and that's okay I will take that role if, if it if it gets to if it gets that student to the to the area and the life that they want I will take whatever role I need to I'm not here to be popular I'm not here to be well like people who know me know I love them know I try my hardest and I will always give them what what I can when I can but if I know that this person needs something and I have to take that role of the bad guy to upset you just for a little bit it, then I will do it because I will want to come from that truthful thing. Understand that, understand that people, understand that healing comes from, you know, sometimes some pain, uh, sometimes some painful ideas. Understand that, that, that you have to relive that past. And actually, I'm going to cut off the show right from here. I actually had a lot more to do, but since I got to do this, uh, um, this little contest here, I, you know, I, I think, I, I think next week I'm going to continue some of this because I want to get some, I want to get some ideas through. Uh, but, um, but yeah, I, I just want to be able to do that. So anyway, so let's do, let's do this. So on July 14th through the 16th, if you're in the Chicagoland area, there's, they're having a festival called the Chicago Open Air. So the contest is this, anybody who writes in, and I'll give you the email in a second, I want you to write in and I want you to answer these two questions. And the first two sets of people, and you cannot be from the same household, you have to be from different households. Uh, but uh, these two questions answer this. Before they were Corn, the band Corn, what was the original name of the band? And then name their members. Those that two part answer and email transcendental transformations that's plural at gmail.com. That's transcendental transformations at gmail.com. Again, the first two sets of people from different households uh, wins two general mission tickets to the Chicago Open Air. And uh, you know, it's gonna be a good it's gonna be a good time. I'm gonna be there, we're gonna have a, a really good time. I can't wait for the festival. I think uh, the owner of the station, Dean's gonna be there. So I'm really Really looking forward to this. If you're in the Chicagoland area, make sure you do that. But write in again. The question is: Before they were Corn, what was the original name of their band? And then name all the members of that original band. 
Okay. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's show. I like I said, I think next week I'm going to start off with a continuation because there's still some more I want to uh, cover. But uh, you know, it's it's a new time thing, so I'm still getting adjusted to that. But follow us on our Facebook at facebook.com forward slash transcendental transformation radio show. You can visit my website at soulandspiritguide.com. Sign up for the newsletter to receive uh, VIP access and hidden shows from spe and special guest offers. Uh, again, email us at transcendentaltransformations at gmail.com uh, and visit the W4CY uh, website for more information. All right, everybody, have a wonderful week and always remember to believe in yourself and it's not our abilities or our talents that make us who we are, but it is our choices. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Oh. <laughs>